Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, welcome to Good Owl Games, and this is December slash January's monthly roundup video, the one where I tell you about the changes to my board game collection. So past me just reminded future me to tell you that I will be announcing the winner for the Brian Brew giveaway right at the end of this video. Um, so stay tuned to find out if you're a winner. Ah, oh, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> All right, keep watching. <laughs> So firstly, hello and welcome to all you new subscribers. It is mostly terrifying that so many of you are here. Um, but yeah, definitely welcome to the monthly roundup video. Um, I'll talk about all these subscribers in a, in a little bit. Um, but how this video normally works is I will talk about new games I got for my collection this month. Um, I used to talk about trades, but they're not really happening anymore. Yay, Brexit and all that. Um, and then I'll talk to you about some of the games I've been playing over the past month too. So yeah, I, I do this every month. You can come join in. And of course, I want to hear what you've been playing as well, what you've been buying, anything good that's out there that you've really liked. Um, I love hearing your responses in the comments. Um, and a big shout out to all those people who do reply and reply in detail. I get to hear everything and it's really, really exciting. Um, so the first section then that we, that we do is new games. Um, and then we go into what I've been playing. I kind of said some of this. And then the last portion is kind of a little bit of personal stuff about me, maybe in the channel. You don't have to watch everything. You can pick and choose as you like because I made timestamps for them all in the bottom of the video. Um, so there you go. Okay, now you've been initiated. Um, let's start. So this is the first month over of 2022. I, it doesn't feel like a 2022, does it? It just feels like an extended part of 2021, but... There you have it. Um, and I wanted to know as well, did anybody make any New Year's resolutions? Did anybody do one of those board game charts where like the 10 by 10 thing, like set yourself a challenge? Um, so I saw that Ross from at More Games Please is trying to play a different board game or a board game every day for the whole year. And I look at stuff like that and I get a heart attack. <laughs> I'm like, the pressure. Um, but maybe you've all set smaller goals of things you want to do or games you want to play. Maybe you want to buy less games and play more of your old ones. Yeah, I want to hear all about that stuff. Um, that's always interesting. I'm not committed enough to make those kinds of decisions, I think. Um, but anyway, all right. So let's jump into what I've been buying. Um, you know what? There's not a lot of games to buy right now. And... There's a couple of things I think that are really exciting that people are interested in, but just aren't readily available yet. I'm looking at you, Russian Railroads, and you, Imperial Steam. Um, stuff that, you know, there's word of, and maybe that we're seeing at some conventions, but aren't readily available yet. So, I don't know, my shopping has definitely been on the thin. And this explains why this first game got purchased. So, um, I'll put you out of your misery. So, this is A Feast for Odin. Um, by Uwe Rosenberg from Z-Man Games. And those of you who are Rosenberg fans um, will be well aware of what this is about. But, so like, I don't know, I've never really been a big fan of Rosenberg titles. They always seem a little bit slightly too structured and slightly punishing for my liking. A lot of them are agricultural related. Um, some of the games feel very similar, um, except for Patchwork, because then he started, so he went from doing farming stuff, kind of worker placement things, to like polyonomos, like the Tetris shapes. Um, and I didn't mind Patchwork, actually, um, to be fair, but then that evolved into a whole bunch of other games about that. And then somehow combined all of these things in A Feast for Odin. So this is a game in which you are Vikings. And what you're trying to do is kind of get treasures, animals, stuff like that, all sorts of things that will give you points, I suppose. Um, is, the, is the theme thin? Maybe. But it is mostly like a giant worker placement board. And there are tons and tons and tons of options, which what I, I think makes this one feel different than some of his others. There's lots of strategies and lots of places to go. And um, you have your own player board, which you are trying to cover in polyonimo pieces. So it's combining the whole Tetris feel with the whole worker placement feel. And I probably shouldn't like it half as much as I do. But coming up to Christmas, we have hadn't bought any board game for Christmas. We're like, what are we going to do? And our, our local shop had a feast for Odin. And we always considered kind of maybe we would trade for it someday, not really buy it. But, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. So we bought a copy of a feast for Odin. Um, and you know what? I'm enjoying it an awful lot. I think there's something very 
oh, it's very clever in parts because these polyonimo pieces you get are kind of items that you work on the board. So if you have an animal, you can turn it into its hide. If you have like vegetables and things like that, you can turn them into something better. And what happens is with the polyonimo pieces that as you upgrade it, it upgrades. So it can turn into different shapes and things like that to fill out your board better. So I really love that sense of progression that the game has. Um, I like that you don't have to just do one thing, that there's loads of ways to do it and there's loads of space to do it as well. Um, and I find it kind of chill and relaxing compared to some of his other titles. You don't have to worry about feeding your children as much because the game sometimes just gives you free stuff every couple of rounds. And yes, there are beans. Like, what's his obsession with beans? There's a lot of beans in all of his games. Um, but yeah, I am. you know what? It went down a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting another few games under my belt where I feel like I'm developing a real strategy. I don't feel like I've got to there yet. I feel like I'm still, like every time I play, I've learned something slightly different. Like the rules for placing those polyonimo Tetris pieces down on your little board um yeah i could do with a touch up on that but um yeah if you want to hear more i talked about this in the annual roundup video because it just it happened to make one of those slots so it got shoved in there but um yeah i have been liking it so i officially own one Uwe rosenberg game um i have owned others but they've all moved on so i'm hoping that this one will stick around um yeah it's good stuff right what came next so we did have one delivery before Christmas um, and this was a Kickstarter delivery that arrived on time. Woo, cheering for indie boards and cards. <laughs> um, so this is Aeon's End Legacy of Gravehold. Now, let's start with what's Aeon's End about before we talk about this specific version. So um, Aeon's End is a cooperative card game in which you have your own deck that you're going to build and you and your group will take on a, usually a very unique and cool kind of monster or boss that will have unique mechanics for, you know, when, when you play it, depending on which boss it is. And it's up to you to build an awesome deck by buying stuff and adding things into it to take down a monster. Um, and I like it a lot. I'm a really big fan of this. And also, as I don't normally enjoy cooperative games because my husband is very much an alpha gamer and he's very good at going you do this and I do this and you know one of those um who has an answer for everything but in this case you really are kind of doing stuff on your own and while you can communicate and stuff like that with the other player I don't think anybody's deck is built in solely to support some other player so you are always doing your own thing and I like that very much about the game. And because of the way you draw your cards and things, it's almost impossible for someone else to tell you what you should be doing. Um, I don't know, I think it really helped with that kind of, you know, a leader kind of problem. The coolest thing about Aeon's End, wait for it people, this is a deck builder with no shuffling. Ho ho ho. Um, and it is the greatest invention of all time and I miss it in every other game I've played since. And what this means is normally in a deck building game, so you'll buy some cards for your deck, they'll go in your discard pile, you'll put the rest of your hand in and you will draw some cards. And then when your deck empties, you pick it up, you shuffle it up and you draw some more cards, right? Pretty normal fare. What happens in this is that the you when you buy something that goes into the graveyard you put in whatever your hand was on top of it and you draw more cards except when you run out of cards to draw you don't shuffle the deck you just flip it over and start again from the other side so it means that you can kind of stack things in your graveyard so they will come up together and it also means no shuffling which is oh so 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 good um so here's some of the reasons why i love aeon's end it's also got a whole host of cool characters you can play as there are plenty of men there are plenty of women all sorts of cool people with interesting things like i think it's a gem of a game i really like aeon's end and there are multiple you know kind of expansions or versions of it you can buy so you can have even more characters and cards and monsters to play with you you get the idea right it is a little dominion-y in that sense so uh, um, let's get to the game at hand and uh, so this is Legacy of Gravehold this is the second Legacy game that for the Aeon's End kind of franchise I've not played the first um, um yeah I haven't got around to it yet it's quite pricey but this was on Kickstarter and we were like right this is our chance to kind of get in and get a hold of it so it showed up on time in a very large box with a lot of stuff inside of it and we were all excited to play um, and already I have a number of issues with the game and none of it is to do with gameplay, which is really sad um, because 
that I think the first problem I suppose we're really having is the amount of kind of work you have to do to get everything set up between games. So it's a legacy game. So something different happens, you know, every time you play. So you have to sticker things, you have to write stuff down, you have to find new cards, you have to find new characters. Um, like there's a lot of stuff, as in it takes longer to do all the kind of minutia between the games to set it for the, the next, you know, episode than it does to play the game itself. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, also the story in it is not particularly great. Um, so I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll ruin anything for you by, by saying that, you know, we were given a particular option we to decide between which we were going to do and we decided to do option A. So then after doing option A, it just told you, oh, now you should go and do option B. So it felt like our choice really didn't matter at all because we ended up having to do the same thing anyway. And then just as we were kind of getting the hang of our characters, because you can sticker stuff for your characters as well. They, they get XP and you level them up stuff. Um, then it's like, oh, get rid of all your characters. Start with all these new ones. And we're like, what? <laughs> ah, I, was just, I was just getting this. We had kind of a combo going. Um, I was less impressed with the number of female characters in this, but as you do unlock more and more arrive, but the initial pick was one lady with three guys. And I was like, uh, okay, I guess I'm playing the lady. But and despite all of this being incredibly annoying and the plot feeling a bit superfluous, the game itself is great. The characters are cool. The bosses are oh so 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 good. Um, the new cards are fun. Like we 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 had a lot of fun playing the game. It's just all this other stuff. Um, it feels like you know they were trying to squeeze too much into a small package. Like they really could have spread this out a lot more, and you could have had a lot more adventures without having to make any extra content. So if at the end of an adventure we got to stick or something, that would have been cool. If the end of the next adventure we got to add a new card in that we could buy even cooler but putting them all together in one go was just like this is way too much it felt like the game was a, like a different game nearly each time you went back to play um so yeah maybe they've just kind of overdone it themselves here um so yeah so are we going to finish it i think so we'll get there eventually simply because we like the game but at the moment it's just a such a labor to take it out and get it set up and get everything ready for the next you know episode that it's really taking away from the fun levels that should be here um, but I stand by what I said, Aeon's End is still a cracking game and some of the mechanics for the bosses are brilliant. Um, I think they're super smart. I like the characters. You know, it's got, the game is great. Like, it is. It's just all these other bits. Um, so yeah, we'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll report back if I get it, fi if I get it finished at some point. I think it's, we're at the point where we just need, need to leave it set up for a couple of days so that you have less kind of finding and things to do, um, in between. So yeah, so that's Aeon's End Legacy of Gravehold. Um, anyone else playing it? Anyone else get it? Um, I know there's Aeon's End fans in here. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the final purchase um, of the last two months, which just arrived this week. So I've not played it yet. Sorry, folks. And it's Messina. And I'm going to forget the year. I want to say 1347. I'll put it up there and um, to make it proper um so i'm glad i managed to snag a copy of this um it you know i i have to do a lot of looking in europe now for board games as opposed to the uk as i might have done before sorry i can't help but lament that source of board games it was really good while well, it was good um so yeah messina's just arrived um for those of you who don't know this is from the same designer who made praga Pulsar 2849, um, so this is Vladimir Suchi, who I have a very much a love, love, hate relationship um, with. And I've explained this before because um, I, I picked up Praga Kaput Regni um, a bit before Christmas. And usually the problem I have with Vladimir's games is that I really like it on the first play, but we, we never feel inclined to go back and play it. And I think a lot of his games are just quite fiddly and involved. They had a lot of extra things, more stuff to set up. You know, they're quite elaborate. Um, but I still kind of like them. So when a new one comes out, I kind of have to, like, have a look. Um, so Praga came out and we we're like, oh, what do we do? We managed to actually trade for it secondhand, which made it even better. And we really liked it. Now, it is busy in parts, but it felt less busy than some of his other designs. I'm like, ooh, okay. This is kind of playable and enjoyable because they normally are quite fun. And then this is his latest offering. So Messina, 
1347. I hope that's right. Um, is a game about the plague. <laughs> How on point, people. Um, for a little while when I saw the cover and uh, this description, I was like, this is a game about colonialism and I'm not going to touch it. Um, but it turned out I was wrong. Um, so the story to this is that you are definitely wealthy kind of landowner people on a, an island and the plague has arrived, the Black Plague to be very precise. And it's up to you to kind of gather the townspeople together and quarantine them so that they don't all die, so that you can repopulate the town afterwards. So it's a little less colonially than normal, but I, because, well, I suppose we're saving people, but we're saving people to put them back to work because that's their most important value. I don't know, I haven't played it yet, but that's what it says in the rule book. I've managed to read the little intro bit because I wanted to know why there were rats on the cover because, you know, I didn't know it was about the plague. Um, but this seems to be getting fairly, like, favourable reviews for the people who have played it. So um, I'll report back with some findings next month. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, he normally makes good games. I just I just needed to be able to last past a first game. So yeah, we'll find out. So that, that's everything I've bought because there's flip all to buy at the minute. Um, I see everyone's going crazy over Ark Nova. Um, so I have a friend of mine who's pre-ordered it so I don't have to buy it. Yes. More UA Rosenberg games I don't have to buy, but I can try. Um, and I'll, I'll let you know if anything good happens with that. But yeah, beyond that, I just find it all a bit stale. I assume it's going to pick up soon in a couple of months. And before I know it, my board game budget will be stretched thin. But for now, yeah, it's all kind of quiet and tidy. Right, so I'm going to move straight on to the board games I've been playing. And I'm trying to make this video a little shorter than the last one because, you know. Um, but yeah, so we'll just talk about a couple of things real quick. So I'll see you there. All right, so I think it's time to get a little bit social. Because for those of you who have frequented here for a while, you'll know I pretty much um, exclusively play games with my husband. It's the two of us. Um, everything is kind of the two player vibe. I do get to have occasional three player games, which is amazing. Um, but I never really have any more than that. So when I tell you that I had people around to play board games for New Year's, this was uh, completely um, out of the normal. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I put together games to play with this group, um, what we played, because these are games I normally wouldn't get to talk about at all. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying that uh, my guests were our gamers, but not really heavy gamers. Um, and it also got me thinking about something to do with filler games and small games. Because I think sometimes the impression is that these filler games or small games exist because people don't want to play heavier games. But I'm starting to believe that this isn't entirely true. Because I think sometimes, especially if you're going to play board games all day, you don't want to play a heavy thing after heavy thing after heavy thing, right? You need like a, a breather, an amuse bouche kind of idea, a palate cleanser in between. And I think lighter games have a great space for that. Um, it's also nice when someone shows up not to suddenly launch straight into like an hour long rules explanation of something complicated. It's nice to be able to go, come sit down, we'll get a few drinks. Here's the rules for this. We can play this. You know, um, so yeah, I'm kind of having a new appreciation for these kind of what I would call littler games because I normally wouldn't play them on my own because if I'm playing board games, well, I can play whatever I like. Um, so it's different um, with more people. Um, so the first game that came to mind when I heard I was apparently hosting a New Year's Eve um, board game party um, is one of my absolute favourites. And this is Wits and Wagers. Um, now, there's a couple of different editions of this. I have the Vegas edition, which has a very fancy mat, which tells you how much I like this game. I think they recently um, brought out the Vegas edition North Star Games did in like Walmart in a special smaller box so that you could have the cool feeling without having to pay all the money, which is really nice. Um, but Wits and Wagers is a great opening game simply because it's a game that anybody can play. And it's one I think that will remind your guests of um, like trivia games, like Trivial Pursuit. So if somebody likes that, they'll probably like this. And how it works is that there, someone will ask a question, there's a little section of questions, um, and it will have an answer that is a number. And they're usually impossible to answer questions, you know. Um, so there, there's, there'll be things like, you know, how many uh, American people are, you know, would have 20% or higher? I don't know. I'm not even come up with a question. I'm trying to remember any of the questions that happened at Christmas. I, the only one I remember is one I got right years ago, which is what is the exact 
like duration of the Lord of the Rings extended editions, all three together. Um, and what happens is everybody comes up with a guess, right? And the trick is you want to try and obviously get as close to the answer as possible without going over. So because it's a number, you can be under. Um, and everyone writes down their answers and they get laid out kind of in numerical order. And then what happens is you have two chips and you can bet on the answer. So you can bet that, well, I think you're right. Your answer looks much better than mine. Or you can bet on your own answer going, I know this is really the right answer. This is it. Um, and whatnot. So you don't have to know anything, in fact, to win at this, which I think is a very smart aspect of the game myself. Um, and so then you reveal the answer, people get money and you play for it for a number of rounds and the person with the most money is the winner. Um, I always think it's a great game to get people talking. It's a game where you can see exactly what you're doing pretty much immediately. Um, and also it's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> um, I've always really liked Wits and Wagers and everyone I've played it with has liked it too. And it's just a great kind of opener sitter downer and something that you could play with gamers or non-gamers alike I could definitely see you playing it with like you know your parents at Christmas one of those so um I love with some wagers and so that's why I pulled it out and I finally kind of got to to talk about it a little bit more so another member of games I played party social edition um it's one that I really really rarely get to play at all and it's something I picked up at Spiel like must have been two, three years ago now for like nothing, just to try it out. And this is junk art. Um, so there are two versions of junk art. You can get a really fancy wooden one, which I wouldn't mind owning. Um, but I have the plastic edition. And what junk art is about is it's about creating art out of all these random abstract pieces. It's a dexterity game. Um, so you have all these strange shapes and stuff and things like that that you're going to need to put together. Like the theme of the game is that you are artists and you are attending um, exhibitions throughout the world. And each like city has different rules for what kind of you know sculpture it is that you're trying to build. Um, and this is what makes the game interesting because it isn't you're just trying to build it up and have it not fall down although that happens. There are certain versions where, you know, you will add a piece to, you know, your sculpture and then you hand your sculpture to somebody else and they have to carry it on. Or there's ones where you're choosing what piece your opponents are going to get next and things like that. Um, and so there's a, I think the, the fact that the rules are different for each place um, make it more than a one hit pony, I wanted to say. <laughs> one hit wonder. What's the one with the pony then? One hit wonder. Don't know where I got a pony from. There's definitely something to do with one-hit wonders and ponies. Okay, fair enough. Write, write the answer in the comments below. One-hit wonder. Ponies. Okay. All right. But anyway, so what makes this game special is the fact that you use the pieces differently depending on which city you go to. And I think you go to three in total. Um, so it plays a good number of people. Um, it's very fun to try build the structures, especially kind of in an environment where you have a group of people so you can point and go, ah, yours is going to fall over or oh, yours looks really good. Don't touch it. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and it's fun and bright and colorful. Um, it's one of the few dexterity games I still own, actually. I've been through a number of them because I'm, I'm a big fan of them, but then never play them. And Junk Art has kind of stood the test of time because it seems to go kind of well. Um, with other people and it's kind of a group activity nearly as well um, doing it all kind of like that so we had quite a bit of fun with junk art and we made some cool pieces of art so um, yeah I thought that was quite fun to do in a game I rarely get to talk about um, right okay so that's enough kind of of the party stuff um, but I think I might jump on to one more classic and then we'll call it quits right because you know you guys have lives and things to be doing um, right, so I'm going to go with a choir, actually. Um, so choir is by Sid Saxon. Um, my edition is the really old one with the guy on the cover. It looks like a book on the side. And apparently there's a whole series of these board games that look like books on the edges. How, how gorgeous. Why can't we go back to that? Um, so a choir, if you haven't heard of it, I suppose maybe I wouldn't expect you to have heard of it. But a choir is just, in shorthand, it's a better monopoly um like this is the kind of thing that almost i wish was in people's houses instead of monopoly but here we are um so what acquire is about is about you know the world of high finance 
And what you are doing is creating corporations and trying to merge them together so that your stocks are worth a ton of money and then you can sell them for cash and then maybe set up another company. Um, and that really is the, the game. The game is about stocks um, and money and creating these little companies. Um, so the game board is a grid with letters and numbers on it. So like, and you have a bag full of tiles that will match those locations and you will draw the tiles out of the bag and then you get to decide where to place them out in the board. And this is kind of the strategic element of the game because you might have a tile that merges two companies, but you don't want to do that yet because you probably want more stock in one of them before it gets, you know, eaten up by the other company. And so it's that kind of thinking. Um, it's very straightforward. It's pretty basic. Um, I've always had a lot of fun with it. I think it's my husband's favourite game. Um, I played it recently with a friend and I was not overly impressed with how the game went. And I think that's just because my, my husband just kind of took over. Like we were out real early from winning. Um, so it was that kind of feeling. So I don't know if that's the case with other people or could you, know, could, could you exploit it in such a way possibly. Um, but I still think it's a light, fun money game and it has cash money. Woo woo, paper money um is always fun to play with i think and it's just kind of a, a simple yeah fun thing it's very classic um so i'd love to see more people play acquire um yeah you should definitely check that out there's been a couple of different versions over the years by the way some of which include like plastic buildings and all sorts of fancy stuff um so <laughs> keep your eyes peeled and see if there's a version that you like best perhaps i don't know um, yeah, so have you heard of Acquire before today? What are your thoughts on it? Um, is it just an instant classic? I kind of think it is. I don't think it can escape that title. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, there's three of the games I've been playing this month. That'll have to keep you going until next month, I'm afraid. And I'm going to pop on over to the personal section bit. And then at the very end of this video, which I forgot to say at the start, I better go back and say that at the start, is that I'll be announcing the winner for the Brian Baru giveaway. Woo! <laughs> All right then, keep watching. Right, okay, so let's, let, let's say this as it is. There are a lot of new people here. I hope you're all gonna welcome everybody, get to be friends. And I'd like to give a shout out to Foster the Meeple, who are another YouTube channel, who did something kind of amazing last week. Um, so they make, um, kind of, at the moment they're doing kind of a, their top 50 favorite games. So they're at like one to 10 right now, but they also make videos, um, where they kind of give a shout out to their favorite content creators. And somehow I ended up on their list last week. Um, so first of all, off that was kind of amazing. And then second of all, it made me sad. Um, <laughs> I'm a bit upset. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not good with good things. Nice things happening me upset me a lot. I'm just, I find it hard to cope with all that niceness. And then all of a sudden I started getting more subscribers. So people were coming over from their channel to check out mine. And then I was paranoid that, oh my God, they're going to see my stuff. Um, oh God, it's terrible. Don't look at it. Um, but people are here. And then that put a lot of pressure on me to go, right, the next video I make, that better be awesome while all these people are here, right? Um, so I've been on a bit of a roller coaster, but it, you know what? It was such a kind thing for them to do. Um, it was, if it, it felt really good to have somebody kind of notice, I suppose, that I've been trudging along here doing my thing and that maybe there was some worth to it because it's been hard the past month or two. I've been wondering, you know, what, what is the point of making um, my videos because there are so many people making videos and they're so amazing and talented and fun you know and kind of energetic and stuff like that and I'm none of those things <laughs> um you know and it's just yeah it's hard it's hard to see your own worth I think I I definitely think that um and this gave me a little bit of a kick in the arse I think is probably the best way to put it because I wasn't sure if I was going to wind things down or not but then for someone to suddenly go actually you know what that's not half bad um really helps a lot um I think I'm the sort of person though that relies on kind of ex like compliments from others to be okay in myself I'm not good at kind of yeah making myself feel good about things I need everyone else to tell me that this is that this is decent 
Um, and it, yeah, it really helped a lot. So it's put my arse in gear and I've got, I've got some videos kind of in the wings now. Um, I've also ordered some new equipment and I've changed around my tiny, tiny office here. I'm praying that new light I bought will fit in here. I've no idea yet. Um, yeah, sold myself some board games to get some equipment <laughs> as you do, um, because I, I want to keep at this and I want to keep making it the best I can make it, even if I am not as amazing as everybody else. Um, so that was kind of super duper cool. Um, so you should definitely go check out Foster the Meeple and maybe you'll like it. I think they're really, really fun and engaging. So you definitely should check it out. Um, and the other really random but kind of vaguely nice thing that happened to me was, so some of you know I paint miniatures in my spare time and I have a vague plan to paint the miniatures inside and make a video about it. Um, or maybe some other um, game with miniatures if you can recommend one. It seems to be the only one I think of when I think of board games with miniatures that I actually own. It's a very small subset. Um, but for some reason, I kind of won a painting competition. Now, it's not a big thing or anything like that. It's just a Facebook group and they, they pick someone whose stuff they liked over the last month. But they picked me. I was surprised. Oh, my God. I was completely shocked and and then upset. <laughs> and then upset and overwhelmed um, because, you know, nice things and all that. Um, but what's funny about it is once the dust settled, it got me really thinking about something. And I think it's something everyone could hear, which is that just because you think it's not great doesn't mean everybody else will think that. Right. That's something you make or something you do. And someone on Twitter very wisely told me the following, which is that when you make something, you have kind of um ideas and designs about where it's going to end up at some point right so you have a vision of how it's going to be and if it doesn't make that vision you can still imagine what it could have been whereas someone looking from the outside in just sees something as it is right so they don't see all that well it could have been like this it could have been like this they just see what they see um and there's a really big difference there between you know what you <laughs> what you think of what you make and what someone else might think um, and so I'm trying to be a little bit more forgiving. Um, yeah, I, I think that might be the, the best answer. I'm also trying to not entirely rely on my own opinion to judge the worth of something because clearly mine is a little bit flawed at the best of times. Um, so yeah, so that, <laughs> so yeah, I've been doing quite a bit of thinking and wondering about kind of the channel and stuff like that and where I was going to go next or what I was going to do. Um, but it looks like I'm back in the saddle for the time being. So, you know, isn't that awesome? Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy enough with that for now. Um, so what else is happening around here? Well, obviously there's the giveaway. I'm going to have to tape that separately because this is slightly early. Um, and that's exciting. And I have some new videos lined up soon. And yeah, I hope your month has been good. Um, mine's not been too terrible I'm kind of feeling like I can I can get stuff done right now but I have had a coffee for breakfast so we'll roll with that um okay so let's move right on to the winner Ooh. <laughs> So let's wrap this video up then. You've been watching Good Old Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you have any comments, suggestions, just generic feedback about what I've been talking about, I'd really love to hear from you in the comments below. And yeah, come back again for another video. Talk to you soon, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.